Welcome to session four of the High Performance Leadership Program. I'll be covering the second key leadership behaviour, which is the delivery of reinforcement. So, reinforcement, what is it? Simply put, it's praise, recognition, anything which makes the receiver feel valued. Uh, now, at this point, many people tend to get confused and think of tangible reinforcers, the obvious one being money. Now, all the evidence shows that the effect of a pay rise is actually completely lost after one week. <laughs> Pretty short time, really. So, unless you're prepared to give people pay rises 52 times a year, then don't rely on money. Also, money is often not a key reinforcer, especially when it's compared with something like peer approval. And let me tell you, in technical organisations, peer approval is a very, very powerful reinforcer. I need to counterpoint feedback and reinforcement, because feedback is defined as information a performer can use to improve their performance. However, it's not the same thing as reinforcement. Here's an example. If I give the same feedback to two people, this is the feedback. Your work was okay. One person, possibly a poor performer, could actually take that as positive reinforcement. Hey, that's great. My work was okay. Whereas a high performer would take it as a negative reinforcer and say, my work was only okay. Frankly, I expect my performance to be a little better than that. Now, if we look into the world of sports, we can find everything we need to know about effective reinforcement. The sporting environment is wonderful because both feedback and reinforcement are natural, expected and immediate. And there's also scoreboards everywhere. And we don't just have the score on screens, we have it on the walls, on scoreboards. This is a key technique to use, and we could call it visual management. And it means getting people's performance off the web, off screens, and onto the walls, yeah, where it can actually act as both a feedback and a reinforcer. So I'm sure many of you will be familiar with uh, the following situation where we'll, we could call it the group thank you. This ha often happens at the end of a project where the entire project team is got together in a room for an audience with an executive who comes in and says something along these lines. Project team, I would like to thank you all sincerely from the bottom of my heart for the great work that you've all done on this project. Now, let's just get real for a moment. We all know that everybody did not perform equally. And let's just say people align themselves in their groups. We would have a group of high performers who really did put in. These are the people that really brought the project home. We would have a group of poor performers. These are the passengers who rode the coattails of the rest of the project and we have a group of average performers. How do you think they felt after being thanked sincerely from the bottom of the uh, exec's heart? The poor performers feel great. <laughs> this is great. I, I do the bare minimum and I might even get a t-shirt or a mug out of this. You know, these are, these are things that make all the difference to our working lives. Meanwhile, the high performers are sitting there thinking, this executive has no clue what I did and what my contribution is to this or was to this particular project. And if they give me another mug and a t-shirt, I'm going to throw it back at them. Meanwhile, the people in the middle are watching what happens to poor performers and high performers in this organisation. And what conclusion do you think they come to? I'll tell you. They come to the conclusion that it's not worth putting in effort, discretionary effort, because <laughs> you, you get the mug or the t-shirt anyway. Yeah. So this is the fundamental problem of group reinforcement. Here's my simple guideline. Do not 
do it. You, the only reason for doing it is who do you think it's easy for? It's easy for the exec delivering it. But in actual fact, it is so counterproductive that uh, don't do it. Simple as that. It will stop wasting lots of people's time. What the executive has to learn how to do, and what you as leaders should learn how to do, is to deliver honest, immediate, personalized, and specific reinforcement. That means you have to know the people that work for you as individuals. You have to know what their contribution is. Now that sounds like a lot of work, and it is, but it is your job as leaders to actually know who your high performers are and who your poor performers are. And you can't do that by thanking them as a group. Let me ask you another question. Who's been on a submarine? The relevance of this is that the best work on teams was actually done in the 1960s by an American researcher, Bruce Tuckman, on submarines. He chose that particular environment because it was high pressure, if you've ever been on a submarine, uh, they invented the concept of hot desking way before the corporate world. It was called hot bunking. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about you, but it doesn't attract me as a career. And it was the perfect environment, high stress, where teams actually had to perform. Once you'd gone out on a sub mission, yeah, there was no room for poor team performance. On screen now, you'll see Tuckman's team development wheel. And I'd specifically like you to look at the area called performing. The mistake people make when they see this is to think that it's what happens after the initial team development sessions, forming, storming, norming. In actual fact, performing requires what we've been talking about. Yeah? Feedback and reinforcement. The good news is you can learn how to deliver reinforcement. A yeah? couple of uh, tips from my checkered past of learning how to do this by making mistakes. Uh, I had a wonderful HR manager working for me a number of years ago. And I wanted to thank him. Now, as an extrovert, I like to be thanked in public. If you could fill Wembley Stadium and thank me in front of 100,000 people, that would be my bag. So, naturally, I assumed that uh, Peter, that's his name, would like to be thanked in a similar way. And I chose my uh, opportunity, which was a, a group meeting of 100 people, and I called Peter up and thanked him in public. I must admit, I did notice that he was looking a bit ungrateful and uncomfortable. And uh, luckily, we had a good enough relationship that afterwards he came to me and he said, Jonathan, please don't ever, ever do that again. It was the worst punishment you could have thought up for me. Peter was an introvert. I felt terrible. Luckily, I managed to ask him the right question, which was, Peter, if I wanted to thank you in future, how should I do this? He told me he would like me to write him a letter, because then he wouldn't even have to go through the embarrassment of a one-on-one -on -one thank you. I took a lesson from that, which is just because I like to be thanked in a particular way doesn't mean everyone else does. On that note, that's the uh, key point. We are all individuals. And it's no use trying to manage people as groups or as we would ourselves. Yeah. So in our final session, I'm going to pull all of this program together and look at the use of another tool for success. See you then.